Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 20, where you're going to use models to represent the addition of fractions with unlike denominators. This is actually a fifth grade standard. It's something that's a little bit higher level for fourth grade, but I've offered it to my students and they've been very successful. So let's see how you do. Now, going back to addition of fractions with like denominators, remember how easy that is. If you have one part of something, like a fourth, and you were to add two more parts of those fourths, you would have a total of three fourths. This is the kind of addition of fractions we like, right? You have like parts, so those parts stay the same. It'd be like saying I have one apple plus two more apples for a total of three apples, right? the number stays the same in the denominator. Now, that could become a problem. All fractions add like that. There might be a half plus two eighths. Now, these two denominators do not match. You can't add halves to eighths. You must make them the same. So here's where we see the, the goal for today unlike denominators still need to be added and they're added by making them the same. Now you could change the 8 to try to manipulate it to become a 2 or you could change the 2 and manipulate it to become an 8 or you can manipulate both to become some other common factor. And by factor I mean if you count the numbers, the multiples of 2's and the multiples of 8, you count by 2's, you count by 8's, what other numbers will they meet? Well, they'll meet at all kinds of numbers. They'll meet at every multiple of 8. They'll meet at 8. They'll meet at 16. They'll meet at 24. They'll meet on and on and on. But for our purposes, and what a lot of students have found, is that you can make the smaller of the two numbers, you can make the smaller number larger to become like the bigger number. So we could do that by multiplication. So, if we multiply the 2 by 4, it'll become an 8, right? And whatever we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top to make equivalent. So, all we're doing is changing half to something that's like a half, but with an 8 on the bottom. So, 1 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. And let's bring the best of the rest of the problem down so you can see that really I just made 4 eighths and 2 eighths make a total of 6 eighths. Alright, now that's multiplication. Now on your paper, it's going to want you to use some tape diagrams to show what that looks like. So when we're using the tape diagrams, it's really actually very simple. They just want you to go ahead and draw both of these fractions to start off. What does a third look like and what does the sixth look like? So here you can see what I did. I drew tube tape diagrams, try to make them about the same size, and then fill them in according to what the fractions say. The first one is one third, so I will fill in one third of this. The second one is one sixth, so I will fill in one sixth. Now we shouldn't add thirds to sixths. So let's use that same process. Let's make the smaller denominator match the larger one. Now in this case, we would do that by doubling it, wouldn't we? We would say three times two and one times two would change my fraction to two sixths. So my first drawing, remember it was one third. Now it should be 2 6. And to make this 2 6, you would have to add lines in between each section to double the amount of pieces that were there. And now look at the purple shaded areas. I have one here, one here, and one here. I have 2 6 like this, and I still have the 1 6 on the bottom. And if I put those two together, I would have a total of. 3, 6. And that'd be my answer. Alright, let's try that again. So you can see on B that I have one half on the top 
and one fourth on the bottom, and these denominators don't match. You can't put halves with fourths, but you could change the half into fourths. If I put a line down the middle of both of the sections, I just created two fourths. Right? Count your fourths. You have one, two, three. So if I add those pieces together, I would have the answer three fourths. Or you could write it right here, three fourths. Now let's do one last one. I'll do C. So go ahead and take time to draw your pictures too. You can see on C that I have three fourths, just like this one. I have one eighth, just like the second fraction. Now do those denominators match? No, you can't add fourths to eighths. But you could add eighths to eighths. So I could change the four by doubling it, right? I could double all the sections. So draw a line in between each section. And now count them. I have eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I had six eighths plus this one for a seventh eighth. So I have a total of seven eighths. All right? So that's how you would visualize that you're changing one of the fractions. It asks you to start doing this on a line, um, a number line. So they've done the first one for you as an example. You can see that they changed the third to a six by doubling it. And whatever you do to the to bottom, they double the bottom, they double the top. One turned into a two, doubled. And then they showed what that looked like on the number line. Let's use C as an example. Go ahead and take some time to draw yourself a number line for C. The easiest way would to first uh, kind of compartmentalize it into the smaller of the pieces. Fourths are easier to draw, so go ahead and draw zero. Right in the room there. So you have four hops to make across. One, two, three, four, right? And go ahead and label that one fourth. That's from zero plus a fourth. And then you want to go plus five twelfths more. Now we don't have this split up into twelfths, so we will have to now change fourths to twelfths. That would be like tripling each section, right? So put two lines in the middle to triple each section, and now count five twelfths after. So, one, two, three, four, five, and where would that land me? So the first jump was a fourth, the second jump was plus five more twelfths, and that would give me a total of so many twelfths, right? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twelfths. So my total here would be eight twelfths. Now we could see that if I were to be doing what we said for each section is to triple the fours. Right? Kind of running out of room here to show you this work. But this one fourth got tripled. One fourth. We tripled each one so that we'd have twelves on the bottom. And that becomes three twelfths. Don't forget, we also had five twelfths. And when you put them together, you get our answer, which was eight twelfths. All right, now you want to see that one more time? Let's take a look at number B, letter B. All right, I would first divide it into fifths. No, oh, that's a zero, sorry. There's our fifths. Now three of them, zero to three fifths would be right here. And I also want to add seven tenths. Now I'm going to have to go beyond one here on this and I'm really running out of room. But to turn our fifths into tenths, we would want to put an extra mark in between each one, right? 
Now I have tenths, and I can go up seven more. So let's see, kind of squeeze it in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whew, that'd be seven tenths more. And if I count all the way across, that's a lot of tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I have a total of thirteen tenths. Now, how did I get that? I doubled the five, double the three. Oh, I I say, I say, ugh, I say double, and I write times five. Sorry about that. So now I have a total of six tenths on this side. And if I add that to seven tenths on the other side, I would have a sum of 13 tenths. All right. So the number line is one way to look at it. The tape diagram is another way. And there is just the multiplication. So eventually you'll ditch the drawings and you'll be working on just multiplying to make common denominators. Alright, if you need more help on adding unlike denominators, see me and I'll be glad to help. Thanks.